Lev Vygotsky's Sociocultural Theory of Cognitive Development In the early 20th century, a Russian psychologist named Lev Vygotsky developed a theory of cognitive development in children known as Lev Vygotsky's Sociocultural Theory of Cognitive Development. The main assertion of this theory is that cognitive development in early childhood is advanced through social interaction with other people, particularly those who are more skilled. In other words, unlike Piaget's theory, Vygotsky proposed that social learning comes before cognitive development in children, and that children construct knowledge actively. As we can see, Vygotsky's cognitive development theory postulates that social interaction is fundamental to cognitive development. Vygotsky's theory is comprised of concepts such as culture-specific tools, language, and thought interdependence, and the zone of proximal development. It's also important to note that Vygotsky's cognitive development theory argues that cognitive abilities are socially guided and constructed. For this reason, culture serves as a mediator for the formation and development of specific abilities, such as learning, memory, attention, and problem-solving. Here, culture-specific tools play an integral role in the way children organize and think about the world. Let me briefly discuss the key concepts of Vygotsky's sociocultural theory of cognitive development. On Vygotsky's concept of zone of proximal development. As is well known, Vygotsky is most recognized for his concept of zone of proximal development in the context of the cognitive development in children. The zone of proximal development, sometimes referred to as zone of potential development, refers to the range of abilities an individual can perform with the guidance of an expert, but cannot yet perform on their own. Hence, according to Vygotsky, children who are in the zone of proximal development for a particular task can almost perform the task independently, but not quite there yet. With a little help from certain people, they will be able to perform the task successfully. It must be noted that for Vygotsky, there are three distinct categories where a learner may fall in terms of their skill set. In other words, for Vygotsky, there are different stages of the zone of potential development. Hence, as Vygotsky would have us believe, for learning to take place, it is critical that the expert understands the learner's specific zone of potential development stage. First is, the task a learner cannot accomplish with assistance. This means that those tasks that are outside of the learner's zone of potential development are those that cannot be completed even with the help of an expert. Here, it must be noted that if the task is not within the learner's zone of potential development, then the expert may opt to decrease the level of difficulty and find tasks that are more appropriate given the learner's skill level. Second is, the tasks a learner can accomplish with assistance. When a learner is close to mastering a skill set required to complete a task, but still needs the guidance of an expert to do so, they are considered to be in their zone of proximal development. In this situation, according to Vygotsky, an expert may use various techniques to help the learner better understand the concepts and skills required to perform a task on their own. Third is, the tasks a learner can accomplish without assistance. In this phase, according to Vygotsky, the learner is able to complete tasks independently and has mastered the skill set required to do so. Hence, the learner does not need the help of an expert. And when a learner has reached this stage, Vygotsky argues that the expert may increase the task difficulty level in order to find the learner's next zone of proximal development and encourage further learning. As we can see, there are some factors that are essential in helping a child in the zone of proximal development, such as the presence of someone who has better skills in the task that the child is trying to learn. This someone is known as the more knowledgeable other. Here, the child can receive instructions from that more knowledgeable other during the learning process. For Vygotsky, the more knowledgeable other can offer temporary support or scaffolding 
to the child during the learning process. For instance, a six-year-old child knows how to ride a tricycle, but cannot ride a bicycle unless his father holds onto the back of her bike. According to Vygotsky, this child is in the zone of proximal development for riding bicycle. But with her father's help, the child learns to balance her bike. After some practicing, the child can eventually ride the bike on her own. And according to Vygotsky, as children are given instructions or shown how to perform certain tasks, they organize the new information received in their existing mental schemas. They use this information as guides on how to perform these tasks and eventually learn to perform them independently. On Vygotsky's concept of more knowledgeable other, as already intimated above, Vygotsky's socio-cultural theory emphasizes that children learn through social interaction that include collaborative and cooperative dialogue with someone who is more skilled in tasks they are trying to learn. Vygotsky called these people with higher skill level the more knowledgeable other. For Vygotsky, this more knowledgeable other could be teachers, parents, tutors, or even peers. Now, in our example of the six-year-old girl learning to ride a bike, her father not only holds onto the back of the bike, but also verbally teaches her how to balance her bike. From the little girl's point of view, her father is what Vygotsky would call a more knowledgeable other. The more knowledgeable other, therefore, is very important in Vygotsky's socio-cultural theory of cognitive development. Lastly, on Vygotsky's concept of scaffolding. Vygotsky's concept of scaffolding is closely related to the concept of the zone of proximal development. Scaffolding refers to the temporary support given to a child by the more knowledgeable other that enables the child to perform a task until such time that the child can perform this task independently. According to Vygotsky, scaffolding entails changing the quality and quantity of support provided to a child in the course of a teaching session. And then, the more knowledgeable other adjusts the level of guidance in order to fit the student's current level of performance. For novel tasks, the more knowledgeable other may utilize direct instruction. As the child gains more familiarity with the task and becomes more skilled at it, the more knowledgeable other may then provide less guidance. To illustrate Vygotsky's concept of scaffolding, let's refer again to the example of the six-year-old child learning to ride a bike. As we can see, the little girl's father, that is, the more knowledgeable other, may begin by holding onto the back of her bike the whole time that she is on the bike. As the little girl gains more experience, her father may release his hold intermittently. Eventually the little girl's father only grabs the bike when he needs to correct her balance. When the girl finally masters the skill, her father may no longer need to hold onto her bike anymore, and the scaffolds can be removed. 